I'm Luis Scott, managing partner of Bader Scott Injury Lawyers, one of the fastest growing law firms in the country. And I'm also the co-founder of Eight Figure Firm Consulting. I've successfully built multiple companies by focusing on leadership, operations, and culture. Using these principles, my companies have generated close to $100 million in revenue. But before any of this success, I started my legal career as a receptionist and I worked my way up to becoming managing partner. In each episode of this podcast, I sit down with leaders and entrepreneurs who have had the guts to step out on their own and the courage to face adversity. They share with us their tips for achievement, the challenges they have faced, and the glory of success. I welcome you to the Guts and Glory Show. Chad Franzen here, one of the hosts of the Guts and Glory Show. We feature top leaders who share challenges of leadership, the guts it takes to succeed, and the glory of success. This episode is brought to you by Eight Figure Firm Consulting. At Eight Figure Firm, they help law firms to grow to eight figures. Louis Scott was telling me when he started his career, he was working over 80 hours a week to make partner. After that, he finally started his own firm and wished he had someone walking him through all the steps to growth. At Eight Figure Firm, they show you how to develop a business that works for you instead of you working for it. Go to eightfigurefirm.com to learn more. Today, we have Stacey Isaacs, co-founder and managing partner of Work Injury Rights, a law firm devoted to protecting the rights of injured workers. In her spare time, she sings in a cover band. Stacey, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Uh, what's your favorite? Tell me a little bit about your cover band. What's your favorite song that you sing or what kinds of songs do you guys sing? Um, we do pretty much 80s rock, so all the stuff like Pat Benatar, Heart, Scandal, all that stuff, Go-Go's, I love anything 80s. Do you play gigs? We do. Well, Which... we did a lot before COVID, but they you know, slowed down, obviously, but we're getting back into it. Is there, so is there one song that you think you just particularly nail? I do have one. It's Peace of My Heart by Janis Joplin. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. I like that one. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about work injury rights. What kinds of, uh, what do you guys do and what kinds of clients do you guys serve? Work injury rights is exclusively devoted to representing injured workers. So anyone that has been injured on their job, we take care of them. What uh, attracted you to becoming an attorney? This, this started when I was very little. Um, when I was probably like nine years old, I used to get the bags of potato chips and I would look inside and say, you know, this is half empty. It's all filled with air. So I wrote a letter at nine years old to Frito-Lay complaining. In response, I got a letter from, you know, the CEO and a case of chips. So even back then, I was trying to fight for rights. Very nice. Very nice. What are some of the challenges of... Um of fighting for work injury rights, like the most common challenges? Well, the challenge would be the law in the state of Florida is very much geared to protect the insurance company and the employers. So they make it very difficult for the injured worker to even get medical care or um, get lost wages. It's a very challenging process that is very much um, it, on the side of the employer and the carrier. So you, you knew you wanted to become a, an attorney even back back when you were uh, going through your teens, maybe even, even in your childhood. How did you get into the industry? As soon as I took the bar, I just started putting you know resumes out there. And my very first job was for a personal injury lawyer. That lasted a few months and I met somebody in court who said, I really think you would like workers comp. It's different. The law is totally different. And I think you'd be good at it. And I applied for a job working for Liberty Mutual Insurance Company as staff counsel. And I stayed there for quite a few years. How did your current position or work injury rights, your current firm come about? So after spending 11 years working as staff counsel for AIG Insurance, they did a massive layoff. In fact, my boss was laid off at the same time that I was. So it was kind of a turning point because I was already 40 and I, you know, just had a bit of soul searching as to whether I could go out and work for somebody else at that age. And I decided that I did not want to do that. 
And that's how work injury rights was formulated, along with the help of my husband, who I had met litigating cases. We were on opposite sides. When I worked for the insurance company, he represented injured workers. And then here I was getting laid off. And we just said, you know, we can do this. So you met when you were uh, when you guys were opposing each other? Correct. Wow. I also met met our other partner, William Harrow, the same way. So you you are now uh, partners. I mean, you're married, but you're also partners. What are some of the uh, challenges and some of the benefits that come uh, with being kind of work, in a work partnership with a spouse? Well, you know, David would probably give different answers, but from my perspective, um, I like that I get to see him all the time because we work really hard and the work kind of follows you home because you still, you have to to your clients phone calls after hours and such. So I feel like I would never see him if we didn't work together. So to me, that is a benefit. Also, he is, you know, an endless source of knowledge since he's been representing the injured workers longer than I have. And for him, I'm a source of knowledge as to the tactics of the insurance companies because I was on that side for so long. The challenge is, you know, it's pretty obvious working with your spouse can just be difficult in and of itself because if you do have a disagreement at work, it follows you home. But we've we've navigated it pretty well. And here we are, you know, eight years to it we're still together so do you have to kind of uh do you, not even regarding disagreements do you have to kind of set like office hours <laughs> like uh this at this time we talk about work when we're a, um watching tv we don't or do you, do you do stuff like that or do you not worry about it uh that's a great idea chad that i think i should bring home to him but no it for our thing we're always bouncing ideas off each other and mm-hmm. talking about it what is a favorite story from your practice Um, I have one client who was very much hung up on, she felt that her injury was caused by her employer making her do things that were really not part of her job. Um, She basically was one of those women who spray fragrances, like at a department store, you know, when you walk through the mall, so she would spray, but on the day she was injured, they had her, you know, restocking boxes of fragrances and you know they're pretty heavy because they come with many boxes so she was upset she because it was a life-changing injury that she felt would have been avoided if they didn't make her do something she should have been doing so when we went to settle case she insisted that one of the terms of the settlement in addition to the money was that they had to write her a formal apology card and they actually did it and it's just funny to see that in the mediation agreement, you know, employer must write an apology to so-and-so. And And that's the one and only time I've ever had an insurance company agree to that. (laughs) Very nice. Very nice. Uh, I'd love to talk about some lessons learned in your practice journey. Um, But first, how did you discover eight figure firm and Louise Scott? I actually have a close friend who is a sorority sister of mine. And she just relocated about a year ago from New York to Florida, where we are. And her husband knows Luis. And he, you know, in speaking with David and I said, you really need to meet Luis. I go to all the conferences and um, I think it would really benefit your practice. And we listened to him and, you know, things have taken off since we started with Luis. How has it benefited, benefited your practice? Like, what are some lessons you have learned? So we completely changed the culture of the firm. Now we're very much more client based. You know, their happiness now is our our top priority, whereas before we were just so eager to bring in the volume. So we're just trying to have a better experience now for the client. What are some ways that you guys try to do that? It all starts from the second somebody places a call to the firm. You know, they just get treated with um, a a lot of respect. Um, They get a swag box when they do sign a retainer. It has a lot of cool stuff in it with our logo. Um, We have implemented different strategies, you know, speaking to them every two weeks, which at most law firms is unheard of to touch base with the client every two weeks. But that's what we're doing. And it seems to be working. What do, you th- what do you say it's been working? Like, how has it changed things for you guys? So when you look at the metrics of 
where the cases are coming from when they come in, there are a lot more referrals from clients. So they'll recommend us to somebody they know. Whereas before, most of the referrals were, you know, either from another attorney or just digital marketing. Since this is the guts and glory show, I'll, I'll ask you to tell two separate stories. What is one gut story where you kind of, kind of overcame something that you maybe should, didn't think would be easy at the time? And then what's one glory story that you're kind of just proud of? Start with the gut story. And this should be work related, you mean? Or, or if, you, if there's another one that took a lot of guts, uh, we're happy to hear that as well. <laughs> okay. Um, well, in terms of guts, I mean, uh, when my daughter was three months old, I was diagnosed with an incredibly rare cancer. And I had to pretty much up and leave Florida and my job and go for treatment in New York because it's so rare that in Florida, they couldn't seem to figure out what they were doing. Um, so, you know, I'm a cancer survivor and I think that alone is, you know, pretty gutsy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations on that. What about, <laughs> a, what about yeah. a, what about a glory story? Um, I think just changing what side I was working on, you know, at 40 years old and literally starting from my dining room table, like it was an idea, Hey, we're going to do this. I'm not going to go work for somebody else. I had a little bit of severance. So I had some money coming in. I said, let's just start this. But most people just don't start from scratch. I had no cases. I basically hung a shingle. I went around giving um, baskets to personal injury lawyers with my card, you know, hey, refer cases to me. So the firm literally was born at a dining room table with no cases. Wow, that's amazing. So how did your first case come about? I think that one was online. There's a website called Avo where attorneys, um, you know, you have profiles and I don't know why this guy was on there, but he was, and he called and, you know, I still remember his name and we're eight years later, but you remember your first case. And then when did things start to kind of pick up where you, where you felt like you were starting to gain traction? So after about six months, and I remember I was afraid to sign a lease for a year for office space because I didn't know if it would work out. But after six months, we had our other partner come aboard. And once it was the three of us um, and the cases started coming in, we really gained some momentum. And it's it's grown every single year. Even the year of COVID, we somehow grew. Uh, I have one more question for you, but first, can you just tell me how people can find out more about work injury rights? Absolutely. You can go to www.workinjuryrights.com. You can also find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Do you have any, uh, my last question, do you have any kind of advice for people who are maybe working in a firm, but would like to start out on their own? Do you have any kind of advice for action steps? I think, you know, it goes back to grassroots like I did. I think a great starting point is going around in person and delivering something. It doesn't have to be big. It could be, you know, a cookie, but um, with your maybe a little folder about yourself and just say, hey, this is what I do. I pay referral fees. You know, can we meet for lunch or can we just have a referral relationship? I think that's a great place to start. Okay. Well, hey, uh, Stacey, it's been great uh, hearing your thoughts and hearing some of your stories and your advice. Uh, I've enjoyed talking to you. Thanks so much. You too. Thanks, Chad. So long, everybody. You've been listening to the Guts and Glory Show with Louise Scott. If you enjoyed the show, be sure to share. For more information on this episode, please see the show notes at www.gutsandgloryshow.com. And join us next time as we talk to another leader in business that had the guts to overcome all odds for the glory of success.